Hi, Avital. Hi, Maya. We decided to talk today because um, what we do a lot of times on our sort of Grack Nation um, page where we communicate through the app called Slack is we share articles that come up that we think are relevant either to our brand or in terms of what you and I like to talk about and do um, issues of women and feminism. Um, you are a very accomplished writer and um, expert in the field of, of feminism and women's issues. And in particular, you're the editor and curator for our Feminism 101 column, which happens every Friday. Um, so please, let's discuss <laughs> the um, let's discuss. And I, I typically don't like to call out celebrities um, and, and bash them or, or be kind of critical as a way to be, what's it called, clickbait? Is that what the kids call it when you do something just for controversy? But this issue, yes, this issue was so um, kind of instantly polarizing between you and me in a very healthy way. And (laughs) not only do I think it's important for us to discuss it um, so people can hear sort of the issues on both sides of this, but I think it's also important for people to see that two people, two strong-minded, independent, um, intelligent, women can disagree on something and have the same larger goal of liberating women and all people of uh, race, class, and gender struggles, um, but that there is a discourse and a way that we can speak about it. So we really haven't prepared this. No, no, for sure. I mean, you, the article was posted, a couple people chimed in and then I I messaged you. I'm like, yeah, I don't agree with you. (laughs) And then you asked me if I was on drugs and I said, not yet. Um, (laughs) Being honest. Um, okay, so no, do you like, want to lay out? Yeah, why don't you lay out? Sort and I of think what we can also talk happened. about this without necessarily focusing just on Amber Rose, right? So this Amber Rose kind of sparked this conversation, but it's definitely a bigger conversation and one I think you and I, the topic, not that we necessarily we butt heads, but we have different opinions, and I think that's okay. Um, and I think that's yeah, you know, that's feminism to a, a large extent and Judaism, right? Like questioning, and there's no right answer, one answer. But uh, Amber Rose, uh, I think, Instagrammed or tweeted a picture of herself, um, bottomless. She had on a bikini and a jacket, but no bottom and all oil slicked up. And it was actually she posted it in promotion of her slut walk event, which I thought was pretty awesome. And her third annual. So we should also talk about how she's actually walking the walk. But we can, you know, talk about that later. And you said that's not feminist of her. Well, okay, so, okay, so <laughs> Well, her, no, you said you her, agreed with Piers Morgan, which I think is more inflammatory. Well, right, well, so so this is how I, so I became aware of this because Piers Morgan um, reacted to this Instagram posting that she did. Um, she posted it knowing that it would be removed because it does go against right. uh, rules of Instagram. And what happened was, so it, it's like if I landed from another planet, like if I literally came from another planet and I listened to what you just said, like the, I, I, I can't even understand. So she posted a picture of herself. Yeah. Um, and it, bottomless with her vagina with this. Her vagina was showing. Um, her pubic area was showing. We did not sorry, see her, her vagina. Let's be I'm sorry. Anatomically her, correct. It's not even her vulva. Her, it was her pubic her, area. Her with hair. Another, Right. And so that actually was her statement was, let's yeah. bring back the bush. When the picture was removed is when she said that her badass feminist picture was taken down. Right. To which Piers Morgan said, what about this is feminism? That's really where I got right. curious. But can we talk about how Piers Morgan is nowhere near the arbitrator when it comes to feminism? No, <laughs> absolutely not. But <laughs> and we should, we however, should make that caveat that he has no, no... but the, the place where I do tend to agree with him is that I tend to be a socially conservative feminist mm. in that um, I am someone who absolutely believes and fights for and, um, you know, lives the struggle of liberating people from the, you know, bounds of race, class, and gender. I don't understand why exposing your pubic hair is a feminist act. In my mind, there's two aspects. There's agency and who has that agency and the gaze, right? So whose gaze is it? So I told you I'm absolutely fine with Amber Rose posting that picture. In contrast, I absolutely despise when magazines like Maxim post like the, the new hottest teenage ingenue in a wet tank top so her nipples are showing with like her makeup dripping down on their pages. What? what Does that make sense? So what? No. It doesn't. So, okay. In Amber's case, 
in Amber's case, she's posting a picture that she commissioned, right? Some she someone took that picture of her of her own volition, meaning she went out and specifically wanted this aesthetic. Um, and especially for a woman of color, I think it's really important who has ownership and control of of the, her body and showing her body and who gets to decide how and where that body is shown. So there's that. Okay. But, you know, just and then there's also with these magazines, that's their whole industry. Their industry is selling sex. And you can say, yep, that Amber Rose's industry is selling sex to a degree or her brand is a sexy brand. Right? I, I mean, I admit I don't follow her beyond what I read in pop culture and when she hits the news for these kinds of things. <laughs> but I have seen like what she does for her slut walks and things like that. What's a slut walk? <laughs> so a slut walk is um, a march, and I think she's turned it into like a whole weekend of learning plus activism, um, where it's about body positivity. It's about inclusion on, on every level, trans inclusion, um, everything on the LGBT spectrum, um, as well as race and all Why of that. Why has it got that word slut? So it's about reclaiming it, right? Reclaiming that I, like, when you say that I'm a slut because I'm dressed with a tank top and booty shorts, um, I'm saying I'm comfortable in this outfit and I should wear what I want to be able to wear. That's not what slut used to mean. No, but it's the idea. It has, doesn't necessarily have to do with sleeping around. I think it's the idea okay. that I can dress the way I want to dress, and that doesn't mean anything about my sexuality, my sexual proclivities, my sexual okay. experience, availability. Okay. Yeah, any of that. That does, shouldn't matter. That I could want to wear, you know, pasties and a uh, g-string. None of that sounds appealing. I to always me. want to wear pasties <laughs> and a g-string, but it can mean that me like I don't want to wear a bra and I should be okay walking around in my tank top without a bra because it's uncomfortable to me and that okay, I but people are gonna people are gonna like men likely will hoot and holler at you because that's you know some men do that right but so the idea is that's not okay right that's harassment it, no. yeah and so that's what the, the what's the impetus behind these walks um okay is that just recognizing the idea that there's a lot of body shaming there's a lot of oppression assault and violence all because of how people are look like they're and just the- Oh, go ahead. Okay. And so the way that she chooses to bring, the way that she chooses to bring attention Mm -hmm. to a festival emphasizing body positivity is by exposing her, her pubic hair on Instagram and then declaring it a feminist act when people say that maybe that's not cool. But who's saying it's not cool? What's not cool about it? Instagram is an app that has uh, an age limit that you're, uh, she's not sending it and putting it out and like sending flyers to like the local preschool with it on it. It's not like she bought out a TV, you know, 30 minutes of airtime where anyone right. would accidentally stumble across so, her, okay. her naked so, bottom. Okay. O- oiled up pubic hair is not something that I really think a is empowering as a feminist act, nor do I really think it belongs on a public social media forum because I don't think it's at all different from an 18 year old oiled up on the pages of Maxim. It's titillation, it's provocation, it's- But it's done so You know, trying her... to thumb your nose at, at the man, whoever that mm-hmm. is. This is a person raised in the patriarchy to believe that comfort with one's body means exposing it. No, but I think I don't think that necessarily. I, I think she was she. I don't know if she's necessarily been like my you know brainwashed into thinking <laughs> that. But I get I get completely because we have those magazines with those images. It makes it a right. lot more. But I really think it's about who has the power, the control, and the agency in the situation, and it's all okay. her. I think to me that's hijacking a legitimate cause of feminism that fights for equal rights in the workplace and it fights for access to birth control and health care and it fights for a woman's right to choose what she does with her body. I don't understand this as a, and I think that's, but she's choosing what to do with her body here, right? She's choosing to put it on this platform and to share it with the world because she's comfortable enough to do that. She, she has a body that is aesthetically attractive to again, a heterosexually organized society. Yeah. Fair. I, and, and I, I think that that's really where I see that she's fitting into 
the the dictates of a society that have decided to label this feminist but what it really is it's another way that we're being held by the male gaze but and feel- we're taking it as our own because we've been told to like slap a name on it this is feminist but it's what it is is it's a society that now allows and accepts and encourages young girls to display their bodies as an act of empowerment when what it is is causing men to leave comments and say gross and disgusting things that that we see that men say when any attractive woman posts a photo of herself. So to me, like, I would fight, I would use my feminist voice and vagina to and pubic hair, you know, to, to fight other kinds of injustice. Or for me, the act of not shaving or waxing my body hair to me is much more um, a conversation about feminism in terms of what's expected of us and, mm. and how men see us and how women see each other. That's something you and I have spoken about. The fact that most women and men are still like super creeped out when they find out that I don't shave and like, how do you function in society? Like to me, that's more interesting. <laughs> interesting then I'm going to oil my body up and lay myself on a set of stairs with my you know pubic hair exposed as a feminist act to bring back the bush which like I just prefer not to call it a bush like it's just like to me again like that's just not a term that I find empowering so okay yeah. so I think we can't assume where she's coming from, right? And, and I think it's unfair of anybody to say that she's been hood, hoodwinked by the patriarchy. She, I mean, this... Sure. Just especially also based on her actions, right? I think by that I mean, like, her her slut walk and her advocacy that she's done multiple times. It's not... It just wasn't a one-off to, like, sell totally. a, an totally. album. <clears throat> Katy Perry. But, um... <laughs> uh, you know, it's something that she's been doing for multiple years. It's not, it's some, it, you could tell she has skin in the game, um, so to speak, on multiple <laughs> levels. And, and I think also, I know it's frustrating and it's difficult, especially for those of us who have been entrenched in working in the feminist field for a long time, when you see someone um, come along and kind of couch feminism in a way that we're not used to and we're not necessarily comfortable with. But you also have to recognize her audience is completely different and it's a whole right. nother generation where maybe young right. men and young women are seeing somebody like her with pubic hair when all they've been shown whether it's in maxim i guess maxim doesn't show uh really naked parts but like in playboy where things are completely new oh no yeah my assumption if i only looked at magazines or even men's magazines would be that Women must not have pubic hair. In, in pornography, right? So if you're showing... Right. And I think so in that or even, instance... Or even media. It's not even pornography. It's right. just media. So right. in that in that instance, she's showing, literally showing, not just talking right. about... Why not write an essay about it? Well, why not write an essay? I mean, essays have been written. And we have to admit that there's a generation of people that might not click on those essays, but a quick p- right. photo. But a so there photo. is going to be that impact. She yes, there will be tons of people... Hair. Yeah. And I think also is so she's really I think she's valuable. I mean she's valuable in many ways, but in this one instance regarding feminism, I think she really is making a connection between people who may not. And so maybe that just gets them interested in feminism or interested in bo- the whole body hair politics conversation. And I think Amber Rose also made a really good point um in saying, you know, Adam Levine can post photos of himself completely naked down to that little like sexy V that some guys have. Um, and a cat. I, I, I think <laughs> finish your sentence though, but that, you know, so that Adam Levine can post an Instagram picture with his pants yeah, down yeah. to yeah. as far low as you can go without seeing something wrinkly. Yeah. Cause and, he's, yeah, it's different. And, and it's nobody and Piers Morgan isn't, you know, and he's doing that to promote a cause and to promote right. his organization or whatever it is. And nobody's okay, so like, on, so you're using your body in this way. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. So is is your feeling that that these should be completely equivalent? If a woman can, sh- if a man can show his body up to a certain part, is it the same for women? I mean, it should be. It should be. I think so. I mean, I think we live in so a society way- that has sexualized bodies, so it's not very possible now because we see body, sure. we, spe- specifically women's bodies. As right. 
sexualized, right? Men's bodies, not as much, I don't think. Well, we also live in a society where women are victimized and 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 raped and assaulted, and men are not. To the so same to degree. To me, the w- correct. So, well, to a statistically significantly For different sure. degree. But I don't want to like, diminish any. No, yes. no, not at all. But, yeah. but what I'm saying is like. There is a difference in how general society views women, yep. treats women, protects women, or doesn't protect women. And to me, the way that we break down those barriers, to me, is not by forcing that level of sexualized equality on then we need the American to be careful. or global public. But then we have to be careful, because then I feel it's a really slippery slope to, well, what were you wearing the night you got raped? Absolutely. A hundred percent. And you it's very... I mean? th- Right. And I think I think this is a good place also for us to sort of I mean, I think we should conclude so that we can, you know, also piece this together. Yeah, yeah. I think this has been really helpful. It. I will say that my, my jaw has been open for most of the time that we've been talking because like it feels so scary to me to feel like such a staunch, like outraged feminist. Like I walk around and see injustice every day all around me and I work so hard every day with my children and the men I know and the women I know to educate them about feminism and what it means the way we speak and the way we interact and the way we date. Like, it's it's like, you know, feminism's like my eyes are blue. You know, like, I can't even separate it from myself. It's like being Jewish. Like, that's just who I am. So for me to see something where I feel so out of it and I feel so, like, old and I feel so, like, I don't get what's going on. I don't even know how to use this vernacular. That's what's so frustrating to me. I just, I feel like, how can we bridge that? Well, so let's look at that, though. Let's look at kind of the evolution of feminism, where at one point, women of color weren't even included, right? Mm -hmm. And lesbians weren't even included, right? The purple scare, all of that. So we have to look and see how we've grown as a movement. And and then, I mean, you know, time will tell. Is this the right way? Can we do multiple ways at the same time? I don't know. I don't know, but I like. Do. Let's try not posing pictures of our pubic hair and see what happens. But plenty of people don't, right? So I mean, I'm if kidding. This is, no, I know, kidding. but I, th- I feel feminists like feminists have a sense of humor. I was kidding. <laughs> what feminists aren't funny or have a sense of humor? <laughs> but I feel, I feel we do need to look at kind of this evolution of feminism, and that yeah, she's showing this part of her body. It makes you uncomfortable. Sit with that. Uh, why are you feeling that way? Is it because she's attaching oh. the label feminism? To this picture? Yes. So if she didn't say it was a feminist photo... Why is she oily? I mean, I got a million reasons. I feel pretty clear. Why is she oily? But what does oily have to do? She's comfortable with her oil? Because because that's a style of picture she likes, and it makes her body look good and accentuates the parts of it. I don't know. Maybe she just was feeling really ashy that day and needed to oil up. (laughs) I don't know. But I don't, I mean, I, you know, I think sometimes it's okay to sit with our discomfort. I'm um, sitting in it. And I think I there's a lot of that. aspects of feminism where we have these tensions, right? Sex work is definitely one of them. We've talked about that before, pornography and sex work. Um, the trans movement, there's a lot of, uh, you know, people who are trans exclusionary radical feminists. And I, as a feminist, am not okay with that. I speak out against that whenever I can. I think women's spaces should be available to anyone who identifies as woman as women. And I know that there are feminists that think I'm, you know, in the wrong for thinking that way. So if she's not actively hurting anyone, if nobody is actively hurting her in this process, if, she, you know, she has the agency and it's her gaze that we're looking at this through, I'm okay with this. If there's one thing that I've gotten besides an explanation which I literally did not know how you were going to explain this. I think what I've gotten from this conversation is that we sometimes have to reach people different ways. And I don't get to decide the way that all women or men get to perceive feminism. And some creepy dude may say like, I love feminism. If it means I can see her bush all oiled up, I'm all for it. And that's gross. Um, But that's not going to be everyone. And I have to like simmer down that anger I have at the way Men, at those men, some women will look at oh, her. Right. 
Right, but you know what? If those objectifying men are like, I'm on the feminism train now because of that, then you go back to them and you say, great, now can I help, you know, can you sign up to help escort at an abortion clinic? Or let's right. talk about funding for um Well, and I think and I that. think that's also, I think that's also something that's problematic for me is the, the dissemination of this information mm. on the internet, on a platform that is all about clicks and likes and hearts and creepy comments. I think that's what's hard. There is no follow-up. This is just so a what I'm of saying is with her. Fodder, you know? So what I'm saying with her, it is. I think with a lot right. of with some other people that no, might I'm not saying be in the general, case. I, I won't have that conversation with the hundreds, thousands, or millions of men who feel that way. You know, right? And sh- she won't either. And it was removed from Instagram and became Piers Morgan fodder, which. You know, I mean, I've flashed my breasts to Piers Morgan, so like I've confronted him on his <laughs> issues already, and possibly will have to again. So um, I really want to thank you because I learned so much from you about feminism, and again, not only how to approach ideas, but how to have conversations um, uh, respectfully. I really think you know, like it sounds so bonkers, but um, I I do understand things you know better also from hearing you explain it, and also being able to kind of dial back my judgment and uncomfortableness. Well, listen, the slut walk is in October in LA. Maybe we go and see what it's all okay. about. Okay, what do I wear to that? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever I knew you, you were going to say that. I love you, Avital. I love Thank you, you. too. <laughs> Bye.